When Conqueror's Blade makes a new system as complex as the new Alchemy Fusion, you bet I made a spreadsheet to min-max the results. Let me explain how the system works, how to gain the materials used in the system, and the best way to game the system. And yes, there's an optimal solution. But before that, let's go over the basics. First of all, what does the new system give you? Here is the complete list of what doctrines are fusible in a system. You should make a screenshot or just join my discord which has this entire list there. Some notable doctrines include Pike's cavalry damage reduction on brace. This is by itself is alright, but it can be combined with another cavalry damage reduction doctrine for a total of 65% total damage reduction. I've seen someone test it on the bottom line veterancy for the Brachios and saw nearly 90% damage reduction. There is also the extra charge hit of small shield units that basically doubles their charge damage. And another to note is the increased defense doctrines that heavy shields benefit the most from. In particular, the 130 in all defenses and extra damage reduction as well as even more damage reduction makes for an absurdly tanky Imperial Spear Guards when doctrined out to its fullest. There are also more damage doctrines, lower cooldown double shots, and all sorts of upgrades that outclass everything we have. Fusion doctrines will dictate what units you can use optimally and will create a new meta replacing the old doctrines. For Frontier players watching, there's also a potential to get an 18% leadership reduction doctrine in both Tier 1 and Tier 2. They should exist, but so far I've only seen evidence of one, and that is in the Chinese communities. That's what you can get, but getting them is… oh boy it is complicated. Yes, the game now shows you the drop rates in-game, but it has hidden some of the most important stats when it comes to gaming the system. It doesn't show you exactly what and how much blank doctrines you get, and it's not as simple as putting in better doctrines. You need to account for what doctrine materials you get on a weekly basis. So how many fusion material can we get our hands on? And what on earth are pure wisdom and pure spirits? And what are wisdom and reagents? Let me explain. These are wisdom in my game server and reagents on frontier. Let me call them blank doctrines so no one is confused. They are essentially doctrines you cannot use on units but are equal to the rarity of normal doctrines. They are solely used for the purpose of fusing into alchemy doctrine. You can get 6 green blank ones and maybe 2 blue ones by playing deploy and defend twice a day and another 2 by finishing the daily first victory quest. You can also get a bit more through weekly quests. Now if you add the doctrines you get every week, you'll get this chart of materials you can use. You might notice that you get a lot of green doctrines and very few blue rare ones. This influences what fusion formula would be the most optimal. Or in other words, you want to use as many greens as possible while getting as much out of the blues and purples as you can. Now, what is the best formula for fusion? First, have a look at this table given to us by the devs on the patch notes here. It states after reaching a specific point, you get the resulting chances of reward. Note that there is a chance to get two epic purple blank doctrines in the 100 bracket. Something very important to know is that if you get 99 points or lower, you can't get 2 epic blanks anymore. So if you don't reach 100 points, you'll lose out on double the epic purple blank doctrine gains. With this finding, I've made this flowchart table that tells you what doctrine formulas you're aiming for. It includes the best doctrine combination to use, why and when you want to use this formula, and the chances you get a usable doctrine instead of a blank one. Further right is the doctrine drop rate, then the average doctrine costs, and then the probability distribution doctrine cost quality if you do get one. I'll leave a link to the spreadsheet below in the description and if you have any questions, there is that discord option. Just remember, make sure you overshoot 100 points or else you'll be missing out on a lot of potential gains. I'll go over the options just in case things need clearing up. Let's say you finished a week's worth of quests, you'll end up with these doctrines. 3 greys, 57 greens, 17 blues, and 3 purples. Now you want to know how to use them. Looking at this chart, first consider if you have any pure wisdom or pure spirit and 8 epic doctrines. I'll call these pure things a booster to not cause server naming confusion. You get these from the seasonal battle pass, one from the fame store, one from premium accounts once a month, a few in events, and another once a month from logins. They are of utmost importance as getting as many of these equal your chances of getting a tier 5 doctrine. Our goal is to keep at least 8 epic doctrines ready to use with these boosters when we get one, and they are by far the best way to get the highest quality doctrines in the game. So in order to use boosters when you have one, your week
basically goal is to get as many purple doctrines as possible in order to use these boosters. This is when the 100 point formula comes to play. This is the best use of the rare blue doctrines by far, as it is the only option that gives you more epic doctrines than what you put in. Make sure you use all your rare blue doctrines on this option to maximize your blank epic doctrine gains. Next is the 40 point formula that costs exactly 8 green uncommons. This is the best use of the large amounts of green uncommons you'll get every week. This will give you more blank epic doctrines for the next step. This step being the 400 formula. Use this when you have more than 16 purple epics, so you always have 8 on hand for a pure booster. And lastly, for any grey commons, go ahead and use it all up for the 16 point formula. You're not gonna use this that much because commons are ironically the hardest to get. Now you might have any questions regarding why these are the best formulas. The simple answer is, this way you get more tier 5 doctrines. If you choose any other, you'll be trading a potential tier 5 for maybe 2 tier 3s or below. The last thing to note is the tempering value you'll see as a bar in the alchemy fusion system. This is the pity system that guarantees a tier 5 doctrine. When you reach 5000, that fusion will automatically result in a tier 5. Make sure you do not pass 5000 with boosters or any high point formula. Why? Because for example, you used a 8 purple boosted fusion to reach it, that's 1200 points to reach the 5000. You get a 50% chance of a tier 5 returns and change that into a 100% tier 5. Or in other words, you made your chance of getting 2 tier 5 doctrines into 1. The better option is to use low point formulas to crawl towards that 5000 mark. This way you'll gain the most out of trading a low quality result for a tier 5 doctrine. This is mostly all you need to know about the system and you can now go and use it to its maximum benefit. But I know some of you curious souls want the entire picture so I'll explain every choice selection in detail. Basically an explanation of why you should not use other options. Here is the extended version of the spreadsheet if you want to come to your own conclusions. And here are some visual data I used to get to my conclusions. Of importance are the reinvestment rate and the average doctrine cost. The reinvestment rate means how many points are refined for further use on the next fusion and this influences the average doctrine cost. Go check the spreadsheet for the details, but for a quick overview of the options above 100, the 150 formula compared to the 100 point choice is far worse in terms of doctrine cost per epic used. The 150 choice will lower the average doctrine cost compared to 100, but requires about 6 times the amount of epic doctrines. This also means you're trading a potential tier 5 for lower tiers. Between 200 and 300 points, 200 requires too many rare doctrines for marginal improvements compared to 100. On the other hand, 300 requires only 2 more epics to reach 400 points for 3 times higher tier 5 chances. You should never consider 60, 200, and 300 because they cost too many epics that can be used instead in the 400 formula. The most economical choice is using as many 100s as possible to get the 1200 pure boosted usages to increase your temper meter. That should be everything. If you have more questions, ask away in the comments. Good luck in your rolls. It's a messy system, but at least you know how to get the most out of it now. Remember to sub and give it a like while you're at it since it did take me forever to make this thing. And please tell the game developers to reduce the randomness in this new progression system. Most who've been playing this system have had results they cannot use. I got 2 cavalry and a musket tier 5 so far and I don't use any of them. All in all, this progression system is by far too random to expect anything consistently good. It depends on luck more than anything, but at least now you know how to get the most out of it. Alright, that's all. I'll see you in the next video. Out and out.